Okay, the last political element of colonies that we need to talk about is going to be the Virginia House of Burgesses. So to do this, we're going to talk a little bit of the history of the Virginia colony. In 1607, the Virginia colony starts. And it's made up of people wanting to escape life and have the easy life in the colonies, right? Most of the time, they want to kick back and relax because they have heard that going to the colonies, your life will be better. It's not. You have to work. You have to create a new life. So between 1607 and 1619, the Jamestown colonies aren't very productive. And they don't really produce too much for mercantilism. There's going to be a guy that you've probably heard about, right? He is an angry redhead, but Disney presents him as a blonde. His name's going to be Captain John Smith. And he's going to be really good at yelling at people. His, yell, his main argument is that if you don't help produce food for Jamestown, then you don't eat and you starve. It's a pretty simple argument, but even though people resent him for it, he saves Jamestown, okay? So, John Smith is going to be somebody that kicks the colonies into shape. This is still between 1607, when Jamestown starts, and 1619. Later on, somebody that does marry Pocahontas is going to be John Rolfe. And John Rolfe is kind of a planter, okay? And there's a plant that Native Americans used during this time called tobacco that is used because it contains nicotine to as, as a drug, right? They smoke it. So John Rolfe is going to develop a tobacco that, quotation mark, burns better. Plus also Mary Pocahontas, who was the daughter of like one of the emperors of the Native American tribe around where they lived. So this tobacco is actually going to save the Virginia colonies. It is going to lead to the adaptation of cash crops, okay? And what cash crops mean is it's essentially a money tree. Now, money doesn't grow on trees, but if you're selling what does grow on trees, then it's a money tree, right? Many colonists and many investors from England are going to develop interest in the southern colonies because of this. Later on, there's going to be other other cash crops that are going to help, but there's going to be more interest in colonies. Because, remember, colonies are started by companies. Colonies are going to equal money, especially if people are literally smoking what is growing, right? Or they're wearing what is being grown, or they're eating what is being grown. So maybe sugar as well, right? So these cash crops are going to develop large amounts of interest. Now we need to talk about the Virginia House of Burgesses. So if you're in French, then there's a French word called bourgeoisie, right? In English, we call this word Burgesses, but in modern English, right, maybe you have heard the word bougie, okay? And bougie equals fancy or with wealth. We're going to talk about 
the House of Burgesses. Because after 1619, which, by the way, is the first year that Dutch traders bring enslaved people, cash crops have caught on, right? And they need to decide how to best organize this colony's future. They're going to hold elections among the wealthy, among the burgesses, right? To decide the colony's future, right? And it's not the future like they can determine their own destiny, but the colony's local future, right? Or local court cases. So, one of the reasons that we value the House of Burgesses today is because in the United States, we value wealth. We value something that we can see as success, right? And we also value elections. We have a republic where the ability to choose these people, beginning in 1619, the, begin, the ability to choose somebody that's already successful to help you become successful is something that we value today and is part of our republic today. On your test, it's going to ask why we value the House of Burgesses. At the end of the day, bougie people, and we like them. Okay, ask questions of your teachers. If you have any questions, let us know.